Welcome to Pinellas County Schools District Application Program Information Session. My name is Ellen Traskowski. I'm the DAP Specialist, and I'm here to take you through an overview of what DAP programs are, the timeline, and address any questions that you might have. To start off with, Pinellas County Schools has 80 different DAP programs to choose from. These include theme programs as well as fundamental programs. Theme programs can be school-wide, such as Jamerson or Sanderlin, where everyone at the school is 100% magnet, or it could be a school within a school program. So Boca Ciega has a career um, center for wellness and medical professions, as well as a fundamental program. So we have two different types, a school within a school, as well as that school-wide program. <coughs> There are some programs that are countywide, where it doesn't matter where you live in the county, you can apply to attend, as well as application areas. The application areas can be found in our DAP guide, it could be found on our website, <coughs> as well as the schools will have that information on their individual websites as well. Most programs do not have entrance criteria. Uh, the Centers for Gifted Study, you need to have either an active EP or gifted eligibility to enter one of those. We also have entrance criteria for the high school programs for IB and Cambridge ACE programs. Other than that is 100% lottery. Anyone can apply for any of the programs. <coughs> Our fundamental programs are a little bit back to basics. So the fundamental programs are based on the idea that the family, the student, and the school are all giving a little bit more. So the expectations are a little bit different than a traditional zone school, as well as our magnet theme schools. <coughs> we offer fundamental programs in elementary, middle, and high school. High school fundamental programs will offer transportation and limited application areas. And our middle school, Thoroughgood Marshall, will offer transportation. Other than that, fundamental transportation would be provided by the families themselves. We're also really excited this year to introduce two new programs. Lakewood Elementary School will be offering the Center for the Creative Arts, Health and Wellness. <coughs> we also are offering a new middle school Center for Gifted Studies at John Hopkins Middle School. In addition to the new programs, there's been a lot of construction going on across the district. Some of that has impacted our DAP programs. Sandy Lane Elementary School just opened up a beautiful brand new wing for the arts. There's two music rooms, a dance studio, um, so we're really excited to see it come into play. Lakewood High School has also had some major renovations. Um, the Leadership Center um, Conservatory for the Arts at Tarpon Springs High School has had some major renovations. And at Richard O. Jacobson Technical High School, starting in January, we're looking to have a brand new veterinarian building. So in addition to all these programs <laughs> and new construction, um, I wanted to kind of go over a little bit into the different steps you need to take, kind of give you a timeline and an overview of the different programs, what you need to do when, and then describe a little bit um, about how, what we have to offer to give you a little bit more information to learn about the programs and then take any questions at the end. Do we have any questions coming in so far? Not yet. Okay. The first step is to obtain a parent or porthole username and ID. And if you apply for a learning option at the very start of this school year, it is the same username and ID that you used then. If you have not used it within the past year, you're going to need to get a new one before January. Um, the application period will open on January 6th. You will need a username and password to apply. If you're applying from out of county, <coughs> you would have to go through um, the special attendance permit. So you can still apply for one of our programs, but you would have to do it through a different process. The username password to do a special um, assignment request and the application for DAP, you need to have a Pinellas County residence. The next step I would recommend taking is to take a look at our guide, which is available online at www.pcsb.org slash DAP. That guide will have a brief description of all our different programs. Starting tomorrow night, we'll also be offering virtual fairs. So the virtual fair is going to give you a chance to check out three different programs. You'll have about a 15-minute overview with those different programs, and you can ask questions. 
If you do not get to all the programs you are interested in, each school will be recording those sessions. So at any time, you can come back and watch them or check out some different programs that you're interested in. If you've already kind of looked at the guide and have narrowed it down to that you know you're interested in a certain set of programs, the next step would be to check out the Discovery Nights. So just to review on the screen, you should see that tomorrow night will be for elementary schools and our 2K8 programs. So Madeira Beach will be there for both their elementary and their middle school program, as well as Sanderlin. So the middle school component will be tomorrow night <coughs> if you are interested in Sanderlin or Madeira Beach. Next Monday, um, next Monday we will be <coughs> offering high school programs. Next Thursday, we will be offering middle school programs, with the exception of Sanderlin and Madeira, who will be there tomorrow night. And then on Saturday the 7th, we will be offering all DAP programs available for that. Like I said, it's a quick overview of the process. You get a, a quick view what the program has to offer. You'll meet the coordinator, the principal, you'll get some questions, and then you'll be able to decide if you want to learn more to visit one of those discovery nights. The third step is that you can tour the school virtually at the current times, <coughs> and then you can start to narrow the program down. We're getting a lot of questions in about shadowing opportunities and tours. With our current health and safety protocols in place, if a school can do it safely, um, they may be looking into it, but right now the majority of schools will be doing virtual options. So they will look at putting pictures of their campus or a video of their campus on their website. The next step is to attend the different discovery nights. So with the different discovery nights, it's going to be more in depth. Most of them will start at 6 o'clock. We do have them all listed with the dates on our website. You will get to meet the teachers, you'll meet the principal, you'll get to explore the different programs and the benefit that it has to offer. <coughs> With that program, the Discovery Night, you'll be able to do all of that, go through rotations and get a much more in-depth view of the program than you will during the fair. So the fairs are kind of like an introductory and the Discovery Nights are kind of going more in-depth to really get an idea of what that program has to offer. Um, the guide and the websites um, and discovery nights can all be found at www.pcsb.org backslash DAP. On that page, you will see links for the discovery nights as well as the DAP guide, which will kind of give you that overview of all the different programs to start looking at. Once that process is done, it looks like we have a couple questions, so I'll go ahead and take one or two right now. Dual language is only offered at Garrison Jones as a DAP program right now. However, Ponce de Leon is offering it in kindergarten and next year will be going to um, VPK this year and next year will be kindergarten. Um, you can apply for that using something called a special attendance request. So it's not part of the DAP programs, but there's still a way to get to that program if you are not um, zoned for Ponce de Leon. If you're going to middle school with the same program, so it works differently at the two schools. Madeira Beach is an automatically roll up. If you are at Sanderlin, you have to apply for the middle school portion. So it's not just an automatic, you'll, you're in one and going to the other. I'm gonna take you through a little bit now about the application process and then the proximity priorities and some of the other priorities, which will also help answer the feeder pattern question. So starting on January 6th at 12.01 a.m., and I cannot stress this enough, and every year people do not, <laughs> they will wait up so they can apply at 12.01 a.m. When you apply during the period does not make a difference. It is a random computer-based lottery. So you can apply at 12.01 at the first day or 4.58 on the last day and you will still have the same chance of getting in. The application period runs from January 6th through January 15th. It closes at 5 p.m. So if you are in the process of making that application at 5 p.m., it will allow you to finish that up. If you come on or sign on after 5 p.m., it will not allow you to do it. So 
You can start on the 6th, go through the 15th. I recommend not waiting to the last minute because you never know what's going to happen. Um, we've had cases with the electricity or the internet going down or different um, pieces. So you don't have to apply the first day, but definitely don't wait to that last day because you never know what's going to happen. You will need your username and password. Uh, you'll go to reservation.pcsb.org. We will also have some Facebook Live events to kind of walk you through the process, like what does that screen sh look like, the different steps to apply. Um, we'll do that closer to that application program. We'll also be offering some help sessions where you could either Zoom or team into one of the members from Student Assignment who will help you make that apl application with you and guide you if you are experiencing any trouble. So once you apply, there's about a month that takes place because there's a review period. If you applied for the gifted program, they're making sure that you have an active EP or you've been determined to be um, eligible for gifted services. It also is giving time for our IB and our Cambridge ACE programs to be able to look into and make sure that the applicants meet the entrance criteria. Once the review period ends, it goes into a lottery program. So all of the applicants are put into a random selected lottery. If there are more seats available, so we have more applicants apply than the number of available seats, we will do a wait list. If there are more seats available than the people who apply for that program, everyone will get a seat. Once the lottery is run, you will have to go back to the same website, so reservation.pcsb.org, and you'll be able to check your status. When you go in there, once again, when it comes closer to the application or acceptance period, we will have another Facebook Live so I can show you what the screens look like and that you're comfortable with that process. Um, you'll go back in, you'll look to see the status. It's going to let you know if you're on a wait list. It's going to let you know if you got an offer. You have to go in and you have to respond to that offer. If you do not respond to an offer during the February 15th through February 26th period, you will lose that invitation or offer. So you have to go back to that website and we will send out email reminders and phone call reminders and we'll do everything we can to kind of remind you um, to go back and check at that. But if you do not sign on during that time and respond, you will lose that opportunity and you would have to then complete a late application. During that acceptance period, you can also change your mind. So maybe you go on on the first day and you accept one of the offers and you have offers for two or three programs. Um, you can change your mind and go in and accept another one. One thing to know, if you accept a position, it will remove you from all other wait lists. So if you accept a spot for Garrison Jones dual language program and you also had an offer for um, Mildred Helms, you will come off Mildred Helms' list and you'll only have Garrison Jones. The only exception for this is the Centers for Gifted Studies. So you can still accept the program and remain on the Center for Gifted Studies um, wait list. But any other program, if you, when you accept, it removes you from all other wait lists. That's the basic overview. I just want to kind of go over some resources that we have available for you um, that you can look into and get more information. For the first part, if you go to our main website at www.pcs.org, you'll see the re registration link. <coughs> the student assignment resources on the website are where you can put in for an address change or if you're doing a new student reservation. It has a zone school locator which would help you identify which different application period or section you are in um, with that. It also will give you some ideas on how to reset that username password if you're having trouble with that. One important thing to know when you go to apply, you need to make sure that you have updated your address. If you have moved and not updated that address with your school, the application is going to stop you and come up with an error message. So that address has to be the same as the one that's in your records. So you want to make sure that if you move that you have updated that address at your current school. We also have the district application 
program page, which is pcs.org slash DAP. On this page is kind of where you can go, where it's got information about the fairs, it's got information about Discovery Nights. Um, we do have links to the, the different programs. It talks about some of the themes. I've got frequently asked questions up there as well um, with that. You'll also find the brochure and any other marketing materials that schools have given us to um, post online. <coughs> So I am getting a question right now about charter schools. So charter schools are not a part of the DAP process. They're actually under a charter with Pinellas County Schools, but they are independently owned and run. So charter schools will have their own application period and they'll have their own lottery process. You would need to check out this charter schools individual web pages to get information about charter schools and how to apply when their windows are. So just a couple things about applying, and this will answer some of the questions that are coming up. You can apply for one program up to five programs. So you can apply for more than one program. You can't apply for more than five. So you could apply for one, two, four, five, does not matter. Just as long as you don't go over five. What will matter is your ranking. So the ranking, it's like a weighted lottery. So your ranking will give a little bit more weight to how the computer runs the lottery process. So whatever school you want and you know you want more than the rest, you need to put as number one. If you are applying for a priority or making a priority claim, that ranking also comes in place because if you don't put the number one spot for that priority, you will not get that claim. So you will rank it. Your number one choice is what you're gonna rank number one. Your fifth choice is what you'll rank as number five. Um, priorities, like I said, only apply to that first choice. And this is one thing that, that we get parents' confusion every year. So the priority only goes to your top choice. Our priorities, the majority of the priorities, are given just during that initial application period. So sibling, professional courtesy, feeder pattern only occur during that initial application period. During the late application period, we do have a priority for military families. If they were transferred after our initial application period, they can receive a military priority. I'm gonna go through the different priorities and see if you have any questions about those as well. The first one is a feeder pattern priority. This is where we have some schools, and it's usually only elementary through middle school. Fundamentals are a little bit different but that elementary to middle school priority. So feeder pattern priority means that you might be in one program like Bay Point Elementary School. If you put Bay Point Middle School as your number one, there's a feeder pattern priority that's given to that. So if you put Bay Point Middle School, make it your number one choice, that feeder pattern priority applies and it gives you much better chances to where I can't say 100% guaranteed, but you're gonna get into that feeder pattern school. All of those are also listed in the book or the DAP guide. Fundamentals a little bit different. If you are at any fundamental elementary school, you will have a feeder pattern priority to any of the middle school fundamental programs. So if you attend Madeira Beach, you could choose to do Madeira Beach Middle School. You could apply for Thoroughgood. You could apply for Clearwater Fundamental. What's important is that that fundamental program is ranked as number one. We also get some confusion if you're applying for Thoroughgood and you are in a fundamental elementary school program, that feeder pattern program only applies to Thoroughgood Marshall's fundamental program. So let's say you're a gifted student at um, Pasadena fundamental. That feeder pattern will only apply to the fundamental piece. So if you apply for Thoroughgood and you apply for the Center of Gifted Studies and you put it down as number one, because you're in fundamental, you will not get that priority. So it's really important, more so with the fundamental programs, that you're making sure it's number one. And if you have that gifted eligibility and you're in a fundamental program that you're putting down and you're applying for Thoroughgood, that you put down the fundamental program as your number one choice. 
the only programs that have a feeder pattern priority going from middle school to high school are the fundamental programs as well. So you could be at Clearwater, Madeira, or Thorogood, and you can apply for Boca Ciega's program, Osceola's, or Dunedin's fundamental program. The second priority I wanted to talk about is sibling priority. So sibling priorities are given if the sibling <laughs> is at the school at the same time. So let's say you have an incoming kindergarten and you have a student who's in fifth grade. You would actually not get a sibling priority because next year that child will now be in the middle school program. So the sibling priority, they have to be together at the same program at the same school the next year. Um, sibling will go, so you could do it that way. It applies that we do sibling priorities for high schools, middle schools, and elementary schools. The third type of priority is professional courtesy. And this is another one that sometimes gets a little confusing. Professional courtesy is given to any full-time staff member who works at that school. So if I was applying for a magnet school because I am based out of the administrator office, I would not get a professional courtesy priority. I would have to actually work at that school that my child would be applying to. So the only way to get a professional courtesy is that staff member needs to be full-time at that program that your child would be applying to. After these three priorities is probably the most confusing one, <laughs> which is the proximity priority. And this is using something called the Manhattan Distance Calculation. And it is a formula. And the formula that our school district uses for, to calculate this distance actually uses the Pinellas County tax appraisers longitude and latitudes for the addresses. It's the same book that the 911 and the emergency procedures uses. So it's actually using the latitude and longitude of the school with that associated latitude and longitude of the address. So let's say we had 100 people apply, and we had maybe, we'll make it easy math, we had 20 people who would have gotten either a feeder pattern or a sibling or a professional courtesy. That would leave 80 remaining students. Depending on the grade level and depending on the feeder pattern percentage of that school, the remaining part, usually in elementary schools it's 20%, we do have Tarpon Springs Fundamental, which has 50%, which means that percentage of students remaining will be, go to the students who live closest to the school that applied. Um, in middle school, it's still 20%. High schools, it goes up to 25%. Um, there are a couple exceptions, like I said already, with Tarpon Springs Fundamental that has a 50% proximity, as does East Lake Middle School. Those are the ones that go through and you'll claim on that initial application piece. When you do claim the priority, if it's a sibling or if it is a professional courtesy, it's gonna ask for the student ID number of the sibling and it's also gonna ask for your work ID um, if you're claiming the professional courtesy. After the application goes and after the acceptance period, there is a week afterwards called a newly invited sibling priority period. And that is if one student gets accepted and you have another sibling that wasn't, you can reach out to that school that following week only and let them know that you have a newly invited sibling. This does not necessarily mean that they automatically get a seat, but what it does is it will raise them up higher on the wait list to make it a better chance to try to keep the families together. And it looks like we're getting a question, which I will check in one second. So if I put both siblings into the lottery, does that mean they stand a chance of getting into two different schools? Yes. So you might get offers for students um, for two different schools um, with that, and you would have to decide. The sibling priority, even that newly invited sibling priority, you would have had to put the same school as number one. So that newly invited, one got invited, the other didn't, only applies to if you had put the same school down as that number one ranked program. And I know, and 
Just know I will be coming on early to the different DAP fairs um, to answer any questions that does not get addressed or for further clarification. You can also call the Student Assignment Office with questions, um, and that number is 727-588-6210. Once again, it's 727-588-6210. So if my child goes to Madeira Beach but lists a different magnet school as number one, you will not get a seat at Madeira Beach. <laughs> so whatever that number one school will be, unless you have a sibling there, you're not going to get um, the program. So will it mean he loses the feeder pattern priority? Yes. Um, and Madeira Beach's staff will work with you with that application period um, and what that means for that. Transportation is provided um, to all programs except for the fundamentals, minus the, the high school and Thoroughgood Marshall. It has, it, we do it called arterial transportation, which is a little bit different. So the bus stops might be a little bit further away because it's done during the main roads or the arterial transportation. So the main roads is where they'll have the stops. Um, Countywide programs will provide transportation, and the application area programs will only provide transportation within that application. So for example, there's a question coming in about transportation for Osceola Fundamental High School. Osceola Fundamental High School is considered the mid-county offering, so transportation is offered for the students who live in that mid-county zone with Osceola. If you are further south, um, transportation would be provided to the Boca Ciega Fundamental Program, or if you're north, transportation would be um, provided for Dunedin. You can still apply, but if you live outside that middle or mid-application area, you would have to provide your own transportation to Osceola Fundamental. And this is just some um, Repeat information on the steps to apply. As we get closer to the application program, we will have how to apply. We'll have some videos up so you can stop and play as you go to apply for help. Um, we will have sessions with that as well. I have some contact information if you have questions for specific programs. And I have some questions coming in, which I will address right now. If we get waitlisted on our first choice and accept the second, will he keep no. So as I said earlier, if you accept a program, it takes you off all others' wait lists. So if you're waitlisted, and waitlisted, for those of you who might have come in a little bit late, waitlisted means that there were more applicants than the number of available seats. And then there's a waitlist that is created. Anytime you accept a DAP program, it takes you off the waitlist for others to make room for other people. So if you accept your number two spot, then you lose the number one wait list um, position. You will be given an initial tentative wait list number. That may change based off of what I just talked about with the newly invited sibling, but that wait list number will kind of give you a better idea of if you want to wait. Like let's say your number within the top 10 of the wait list. You may want to take your chances because you can be offered any time up until the following school year for a position. So you can keep the wait list. If you see that your wait list number is like 300 something, the chances of 300 people before you say no is probably slim. So it kind of gives you a better chance that maybe you do want to accept a second or third um, choice spot for that. Entrance criteria. So for rising ninth graders, entrance criteria applying for Cambridge, each of the different schools will have that criteria on um, their website. I also have it at www.pcsb.org DAP. If you scroll down almost to the bottom, you'll see an entrance criteria and a chart will pop up. Basically, they're looking to see that they had Algebra 1 honors. They'll look at test scores or FSA scores. We realize that they're not going to have them for last year, but they'll look at like the sixth grade scores um, with that.
We have another question coming in. If I apply for a sixth grade and a third grade to Madeira Beach, will they still s receive sibling priority? Because Madeira Beach, and it also applies to Sanderland, we have two K-8 programs in the district. So if you apply for one of the K-8 programs, that sibling priority will still be in existence for that because it is a K-8 program. So on the screen now, just as a reminder of the, the time periods. So starting tomorrow, we have that DAP fairs where you get like three different sessions, quick overview of the different programs, getting some initial questions answered as, and addressed. Um, tomorrow is elementary school and K-8. So Madeira Beach and Sanderlin's middle school program will be tomorrow night, not with the rest of the middle schools on November 5th. Next Monday is the high school. Next Thursday, November 5th, our middle schools. And then on November 7th, we have all the school programs together. The discovery nights start right after that and will run all the way through January 12th. Um, our application period, once again, is January 6th through the 15th. And our acceptance period is February 15th through the 26th. At this point, I'm going to open up. If people have questions, please just send them in and we will address them as they come. Into Kurt, okay. Sorry, we have a couple questions. Um, one of them is if I live around the corner from Clearwater Fundamental, would my kindergarten have a better chance of getting into Curtis Fundamental? This is one where it really makes a difference as far as where other people are applying. Um, that middle school priority won't impact that kindergarten one. So we don't really know proximity until after the application period um, with that. So once we see where everybody applies, we'd have a better idea of what percentage and where, how far that proximity period goes. Um, there is a way for student assignment to look up proximity um, at distances from a school. So if you contact student assignment um, or myself, it's dap at pcsb.org. Um, student assignment is student assignment at pcsb.org or at 727-588-2 or 6210. Once again, it's 727-588-6210. Um, St. Pete Collegiate High School is a charter school. So there's a question about why we're not mentioning that. Charter schools are different. Each charter school has its own application period. Um, they do their applications and enrollment and lottery um, by themselves. So any charter school you won't find here, you would need to check the charter school's um, information page about their own application. So it's a, very, it's a separate process whatsoever. Um, early college or dual enrollment Yes, so almost all of the DAP high school programs do offer early college and dual enrollment options. So they're still available to magnet students. Um, discovery nights for each school be virtual as well. So there are some new protocols, <coughs> excuse me, that just came out um, about that. So if they try to do it, it has to be 50 people or less. And quite a few of the discovery nights have like hundreds of people who come. So the likelihood of being able to schedule one where it would be in person, we're not too sure right now. So most schools are planning virtual. If they're able to go live or come up with a live, you will find that on their web page. So you would look to the individual web pages for more information on that. Um, which part of the address your county is. So there's a couple easy ways to find that. If you go to the www.pcsb.org slash DAP, you will see on the right hand side is our DAP guide. On the back cover, it kind of breaks out the zones. And the application areas are based off of where you are zoned for your middle school or high school. So if there's any questions, just call student assignment. We will be glad to help you figure out which application area you are in with that. Professional courtesy, yes. So another question about professional courtesy. So school board policy allows professional courtesy to occur if you are a full-time employee at that school or the DA 
program. So let's say you're at Eastlake High School and there's the engineering program there. You would have to be a full-time employee at Eastlake High School to receive a professional courtesy priority for Eastlake High School. If you were a full-time employee at any of our schools, you, to that professional courtesy only applies to the school that you work at. Um, so there's a couple questions about Centers for Gifted Studies um, going into high schools and does it give them any priorities or preference for that. Um, the high school IB and ACE programs are really looking at um, test scores as well as classes that they took. Um, more specifically, did they take um, a world language and did they take the Algebra One honors? In previous years, they've looked for an EOC score. However, due to the past year's FSA, um, that is not going to be a requirement. We will be looking um, at the previous scores. If they took Algebra One honors, we're going to allow that to be the criteria to get in this year. Um, questions about gifted eligibility. So there's a couple different ways that you can get um, go through the eligibility process. Um, and Coral Marsh's office, um, and it's 588-6088 is the phone number, can help work with that. The first step would be talking to your student's teacher um, and checking with that. So they can start the process at the school and you could talk to a teacher or a guidance counselor. They can do in-school gifted eligibility um, test. We do have a universal testing system in the district where certain grade levels will just automatically get screened for that. Um, so that screening process you can self-initiate. Some families choose to go the private route, and so you can start off by getting a tested through um, a physician, and then there's a form that you would send in and it would start that eligibility process with that. Um, so there's pros and cons of fundamental schools. So some of the fundamental programs tend to be a little bit more of that back to basics piece. So there's also the requirements. So for example, most fundamental programs will have a certain parent um, requirement. So you have to attend X amount of meetings. Um, there are dress code um, requirements that are not at all the different schools. There are requirements for homework requirements. So all those different requirements go into a different set of expectations and protocols. And then there's systems in place that if students aren't meeting those expectations, they'll try to come up with um, a success plan. And then they would also look at um, possible removal if there's consistent um, aspects of not following those expectations. Ooh, good question coming in. Do you have a better chance of getting your number one school if you only apply for one school? No. So just narrowing it down to one school to apply for is not going to give you a better chance over another one. The biggest thing, especially for some of those more popular programs, so Osceola, Fundamental, Madeira Beach, um, you, if you want one of those, you definitely have to put it number one. In some cases, not ranking the school that you really want the most as number one can pretty much eliminate you will be on the wait list, but not necessarily that first offer. So that one, number one rank does come into place if it's a program that you really want with that. Okay, where can I find a list of all the middle schools? So there's a couple different spots. Once again, that www.pcsb.org slash DAP. There is a guide that is on the right-hand corner. It's got the same image on the front cover. That's going to have a list of every single DAP program in the county. It will also have the names of the schools, and it also give you some of the different um, websites to check out them, them more. Obtain your parent portal ID and password. So you can do this at any school site at the county. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the one that your child goes to, or if you're at a private school, it doesn't necessarily have to be one that you attend. Whatever school is closest to you or your work, you would just go in with a parent, uh, photo ID, and they can either reset it or they can issue you a username or password. You also have the option of student assignment office. So the student assignment office can also issue usernames and passwords. 
Um, so shadow opportunities, we are trying to make that happen. However, um, there are some conditions or caveats. If we have reached that max size of the face-to-face -face classrooms, we cannot necessarily have a student come on and exceed that number. Um, and then depending on the school. So we are trying to come up with some alternatives, like having some Q&A sessions or roundtables with students for students. If conditions in health and safety do lighten up, we will definitely be offering that to help make that decision. Right now, um, most are virtual um, without having that in person aspects. If we are in gifted at Sanderlin, do we have, okay, no. So if you are in gifted at Sanderlin and you're looking to go for the gift, Center for Gifted Studies at Thoroughgood Marshall, um, there's only one school right now where you're given a priority for that, and that is Midtown. If you are in the Center for Gifted Studies at Midtown, you will get um, feeder pattern priority to Thoroughgood Marshall Center for Gifted Studies. You have to be eligible. So a lot of times we get a lot of applicants who apply for the Center of Gifted Studies, but they don't necessarily have their gifted eligibility. So being eligible is definitely going to give you a chance to get in. Um, it's not necessarily 100% guaranteed. And this year, um, we're going to start to open up at John Hopkins Middle School. We're going to have a second center for gifted studies for middle school where they'll be able to actually choose an art focus as well. So they'll still get the same exact um, gifted program or center for gifted studies program there. But if they are in John Hopkins, they can also get the benefit of the creative aspect with the arts program. My son is going to try IB at Palm Harbor. When do they look at? Okay, so this is a good point, and I probably should have brought it up when I was talking about the application period. Um, if you, especially this also goes if you are a private um, family or high school, if looking for a high school position. So if you are gifted, or if you're going for Cambridge ACE or IB programs, They'll look at that week after. So you have to apply by the 15th. You have a week after that to turn in any paperwork. If your student is currently in PCS schools, um, the coordinators at the IB schools will be able to access that information already. You don't have to turn anything in. If you're a private student coming in, they're going to ask you to turn in your transcripts and any test scores. Um, and we know that it won't necessarily be the FSA test. It might be one of the other tests or norm reference. You would just need to bring that. So you'll have up to a week afterwards to bring that information to the school that you're applying to. The link to virtual choice fairs. An email will be going out tonight as soon as I'm done with this. But it's really going to be easy. It's going to be www pcsb.org slash virtual DAP fair and I'll make sure that we have a link on our main website as well so it's basically pcsb.org slash virtual DAP fair um, if you pre-registered that link will be going out ahead of time um, it'll be open tomorrow the meeting links will not be open until the fair actually opens I will be jumping online early and you'll see a button on that web page that talks about um, ask a DAP specialist a question. So if there's anything I can clarify or answer any other questions that might come up, there'll be some time before the session start. The first session will actually start at 642 and there'll be three 15 minute sessions with about three minutes built in between to be able to go and choose another session um, in between there. Um, if you did, so uh, there's another question that if they were in private school for sixth grade, but seventh and eighth in a gifted studies program, what do you need to provide? You would not have to provide anything because when you went to register or enroll at the school that you're in, you would have provided all that information, so it's in your CUME file. So we will be able to access that um, through what you've already turned in. So there's another question about elementary gifted studies to middle school. It is the same um, feeder pattern. So it would just be that you would have to put the number one ranked would be that. And then you would get the feeder pattern to one of the centers for gifted studies. And it's based on your residency on which application area you're eligible for.
So there's a question too about uh, Lisa Nelson, um, that they do not have a kindergarten program. So what do you do when the child is already in kindergarten? Most of our gifted students' eligibility doesn't happen until kindergarten or first grade. So you'll see that the three elementary Centers for Gifted Studies program does not start until first grade. So the Centers for Gifted Studies go from first grade to fifth grade, and that's to start the gifted um, piece with that. All our schools, no matter if they're DAP programs or not, offer gifted services. So if they are in their zone school or a different DAP school or a fundamental school, all students who have gotten that gifted eligibility will receive gifted services of some part. Um, so they will still receive services. It's just it's not full time at that Center for Gifted Studies. Um, and I just got another question about the difference between full-time gifted studies. So for those centers of gifted studies, every teacher at those schools is either gifted certified or endorsed or going towards gifted endorsement. So if they're not already gifted endorsed, all the teachers are working on getting that gifted endorsement. So it's not that, depending on the school you go to, it might be like three hours on a day or it might be one full day they receive part-time gifted studies. All the teachers at the school will have that certification so that they're receiving a little bit more in depth. There's also a gifted block, so there's a set time where they're hitting those different gifted goals um, with that, with some unique and innovative programming with that um, gifted block within the Centers for Gifted Studies. Can we apply for a program outside our application area? So. <laughs> this gets a little tricky. During the initial application period, no. Part of it is because transportation is only given to within that area. So they're trying to create where that application area will have first dibs. However, we do every year have a couple programs that just don't fill. And so we will sometimes open during the late application period. We will open up countywide. So transportation still might not be provided completely um, if you're outside of the transportation area, but you'll still be able to um, apply for a few of those programs that still have available seats. Um, the question coming in about the gifted program that is supposed to start at John Hopkins Middle School. So, and I'm really excited about this. <laughs> we do have quite a long wait list at Thoroughgood Marshall's Center for Gifted Studies. Um, so we were trying to look at they also have a very full fundamental program. So we're really trying to look at how could we expand and service those students. So starting next year, we'll be offering sixth grade Center for Gifted Studies at John Hopkins. So next year, it'll start with sixth grade, and then we'll build it out a grade level each year. So next year will be sixth grade. The following year, we'll offer sixth and seventh grade. Um, and with that, it, this focus. So really, if you are in South County, you could choose a gifted fundamental program or you could choose a gifted arts program. Another question coming up, can we apply for a program outside? Okay, I just answered that one. So not during the initial application period. <laughs> if there's room, um, sometimes we will have, if there is available seats and no wait list, sometimes during that late application period, we may open a couple of those programs up to countywide. Just the one thing with that is, is transportation still only offered to that application area. So the link for the application area. So if you're going to apply, it is reservation.pcsb.org. That'll take you to the application site. You will not be able to apply for a DAP program until January 6th. To get just basic information and more information about the different programs and the guide and the discovery nights, um, you would go to www.pcsb.org slash DAP. Um, ESE student options. So all our programs we do, I talked a little bit when I talked about in between that uh, application period and the acceptance period, um, we do a review period. So ESE students are welcome to apply to any of our programs. We will look at the IEP along with the ESE department and really look to see are the supports in place. So we will work with the families um, with that and then we get ESE input and we will contact. 
You can also reach out to any of those programs, and then with any of those programs, you could talk to, ask to speak with an ESE specialist, and they can also talk to you about what supports they already have in place. It is not, um, it is not a limiting factor. The only thing that we sometimes will have to look at is if the IEP is calling for a self-contained class and that program doesn't have self-contained, we would then look and talk to you about what supports are in place at the school and it would be a family decision with that. Um, is the engineering program at Azalea a lottery also? Yes. So Azalea Middle's engineering program, which is amazing. <laughs> if you live in the south or central area, you might want to check it out. It is the only middle school in the world that is offering um, manned drone um, licensing and certificates. It also has a flight simulator, so they're doing some really interesting stuff there. Um, is there somewhere to go to see historical stats? So, <laughs> I could probably post that. That's a good question. I usually get a couple phone calls each year, but not ever enough that I've posted. So, I usually will just answer those phone calls. Uh, the Tampa Bay Times, before the application period, always puts out historical stats. There's always an article on that. Um, so, I could probably look at putting some of that up on our website as well. I just have to pull it together. Um, we get <laughs> quite a few thousand people applying um, for the different programs. We have about 23% of all PCS students are in a DAP program of one sort or another. Um, but if that is something that more people want, I can definitely look at posting some of the stats online. Um, if we have any other questions, it looks like that might be So just, I'm going to send you one more time with our website where most of the information can be found, um, and that is www.pcsb.org slash DAP. So I also, tomorrow, um, will be opening the line, and it will be in the, if you pre-registered for the fair, I'm going to send out an email. Um, soon after this <laughs> with the link to the website address as well as a reminder I will be jumping on board um, and there will be a, a zoom link um, to reach out to me before the session start if you have any follow-up questions once again you can also email me at dap at pcsb.org and I will be glad to work with you answer any questions or clarify anything else Thank you so much for joining me tonight, and hopefully I have making the process a little bit less overwhelming as we start the DAP marketing season. Mm -hmm.